Okay, in this video, we're going to re-implement the find function. This is the last function in our series of five functions where we re-implemented some arrays based function in JavaScript using TypeScript, right? That part is really important. And if you want to see the JavaScript implementation, please write that down in the comments. Like, like you want the JavaScript uh, implementation, I make sure that I make that video uh, uh, whenever possible. And I, I promise if you write it there, I will make that happen. But here we're gonna use TypeScript to make that happen. The function that we implemented uh, were implemented based on one uh, one request, and that request was simply like find the user that has an X in their name, as you can see right there. Okay, so uh, we did the implementation for all the five function, but find. Now let's go ahead and actually implement uh, find. So we just first going to put it in in a result here so we can track in real time what it, what is happening. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and and write a function find and talk about the, the 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 signature of find. So find will loop through a collection of element that we don't know really which which what is in there. So that's why we're gonna be using a known. And then based on the result of the callback, calling the callback, we will decide if we, uh, we find the right thing. If we find it, we return it. If we don't find it, we return undefined. And that is literally the real API of the find function, right? So we're going to implement that by just then going here and then we're just gonna pass this at unknown, as I mentioned, we use unknown because we just don't know yet what kind of collection we're going to get. And then the next thing we're going to need here is the callback. And we're going to use the function just like I did in a previous video. The point there is I'm going from generic to specific. So we're going generic here. And as we, 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 we keep going in this implementation, we're going to make sure that we become, it becomes more specific. So whenever I do an implementation, I always ha want to start with what I'm going to return. In this case, I'm just going to have a function, which is a, a, an object, which is just undefined, right? It's, it's, it is, it is undefined. And I want to return that thing. Because if I don't, if we don't find the, uh, the thing, I just want to return it. And now we're going to loop for here. And then we're just going to go through the collection and then do this. So let me go a little bit up here and talk about what is happening right now. So we have the found. And then while we're looping, I'm going to get this called the callback and then put it inside here. The result of the callback is the one I want to check and, and, and make sure that it is actually true. We, we can go with this and we're going to uh, uh, improve that in a bit. I just want to make sure that that thing is true, right? So um, uh, fundamentally, I could just write it this way because that's the, the fact that that's the, uh, it's the truthiness of that. And if it's true, what I would like to do is just assign the found to the element that we, we got here. And then I want to break the loop. That is important. If you have an array of 100 things, if the first, the first one in the array is the one you're looking for, you don't want to loop through the 99 other ones. You want to stop right there. That's basically what that break does. So with this implementation, what we're basically saying is we have a, 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 a find that will loop through all the element and then make sure that if we find the element, we can just, uh, um, we can just assign it uh, 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 this way, okay? So that is good. Now we need to just pass here our callback and say, we're going to return um, the user.name and check for includes. And we're gonna look for the one that has an X in there. So uh, once we do that, we see indeed that we have, it, it says it returns true uh, right there but that is not really uh, what we want. So what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong here? We should be, we should be having, 
the element is here. We call that. Okay. Okay. See, this is basically where, where I'm making a, a little mistake. What you need to return here is not that element, right? Because this is basically the one that says, uh, we found it. Or, or basically, I could call it here, say, did you find it? That will, that's basically the thing you should, you should, uh, the way you could, you, you, you could name that, right? Did you, let's make sure that this is working. Did you find it? If yes, then you want to say a collection, uh, and then pass that index right there. So if you do that, you see on line 13, it's working. We have the thing working. Now that we, now that we have the implementation, well, let's go back here. We're just calling find. We pass the user and then we pass a callback. We have our implementation. And as I did in the previous video, we're going to make sure that the next time we type something in that callback, it's well typed, which means that if I go here and say dot, I should be able to see name there. It's not working right now because we have, we didn't type things correctly. So the way we're going to type things correctly is to start with the callback here. So the callback, I'm going to call it the find callback. Once we have the find callback, we can define an interface and call it find callback. And that interface will just have a function which is going to take an element, right? And that element there, for now, we don't know what it is, but we want to make sure that it will return a Boolean, right? So that's basically uh, uh, the thing we use here. However, unknown and an unknown here won't really help, right? Now it's complaining because it says, what, what is that thing, right? Because it's, it says, hey, that thing, it's, it's unknown, so you should actually tap it better. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is just to use a generic here and say, hey, uh, instead of unknown, let's have a generic right here. And once we have a generic here, we can actually uh, yank that and then go here, put it right there like this. And then once we have it uh, there, I want to make sure that it's also being passed right here. Okay. So from the moment you do that, you also want that unknown to be the uh, of type T because the element that you get here is the first element in that collection. So here you have user. So whatever type is there is going to be the type of this. So that's why here we're saying, hey, you're going to have a generic and that thing will be of type T. And when we call it over there, we're going to make sure that the T is actually the one here and it's the one passed to the element underneath, right? So with that implementation, we should have now, let's go back here and then say user dot. And then you see now name is being shown name dot. And we can, it knows that, oh, name is a, is a, is a string. And then we can now call uh, uh, this the right way. So this is the end. I have nothing else to to explain right there besides just asking you to subscribe and like this video because we're going to bring more of this. We're going to rebuild the entire JavaScript ecosystem from scratch. Why would you do that? You do that because you just become better at writing code, at writing JavaScript code. Yes, that's how I learn a lot of technologies from Angular, at some point in fee, a few years ago, I rewrote that thing from scratch, like a lot of, of the features to better understand that technology. I did the same thing with React and, and so many other library, RxJS, for example, rebuilt most of their operator from scratch. That's how you learn. If you want to see more of that, did I just say subscribe already? Okay, that's it. See you on the other one and you take care. Bye.